Oh, Indiana here with another episode of the Star Wars Podcast. Today's episode is about the Joiner King by Troy Denning. This is the first book in the Dark Nest trilogy, again by Troy Denning. For those of you who would like to know, the paperback version does include the novel Eulacia by Walter John Williams in the back, which was previously an ebook. So, any of y'all looking for that, just letting you know. So, let's get to it. And for this is also to let you know this is a legend story and there are going to be spoilers. So, the story starts about 35. ABY, which is practically 30 years after the Battle of Endor. Uh, and since ABY means after the Battle of Yavin, about 35 years after the Battle of Yavin. And my opinion of the story is kind of negative um, compared to the other ones. This one seemed kind of. Um, this kind of jumbled and um slow especially at the beginning it, it doesn't feel jumbled because of constant switches between who's the narrator every chapter it more feels jumbled because there is a ton going on there's details about that details about this Details about that all kind of playing into minor plot lines and what's going on. And you're like, what? And it goes on to this other train of thought. You're just kind of confused. And then the Thorians don't get mentioned to like three-fourths of the way book after they're mentioned at the very beginning. So it's kind of like... He probably could have done better, told the same story with less detail. It's just way too much detail this, compared to the other two books, which I'm in the middle of the second book. There is a lot more writing in this one. This is probably the longest book. Of the whole tri- It is the longest book of the whole trilogy. And also the words are smaller on the pages from what I can tell in this book as well. Making it quite a bit longer. Quite a bit many words fit in to this one book. Um, The other thing I don't like is in the average science fiction novel that I can tell. An author will change viewpoints in the middle of the chapter. Quite often, so I'm fine with him changing viewpoints. But the thing is, Troy Denning, the times he uses this tactic, he doesn't use it much in the book till the very end, except for the prologue at the beginning. So you have this prologue at the beginning that uses the normal tactic of leaving a little blank space before it switches over to another time. Or another viewpoint of a different character. And that's not used again till about three fourths away through the book. Because the average view change in the book occurs at the beginning of a chapter. I think this is a very bad move. Because it changes up the... Um, it kind of changes up the feel for the story. And makes things a little bit more awkward because you've gotten the reader used to this one style though it's kind of similar to what you're doing you're used to this being at a chapter and these changes being a lot less often to making the changes more often in the middle of chapters and what I would like to consider the many chapters and it just has a very it gives the story a slightly different feel, and it's something that 
I don't think should have been done since it wasn't used throughout most of the book. He may have had a reason for doing it, apart from just that's the way he needed to tell a story. At that point, maybe he had some other reasons that I can't tell because I'm not literally adept enough. I'm not great at analyzing literature in order to be able to tell that. So I kind of have a negative view at the book. The story of the book was, it was okay. I think it was interesting enough that I wanted to keep reading. But I didn't really catch on until later in the book. Again, the story was like, it built up very slowly. Eventually you got to the point where you're like, yeah, I'll keep reading this and I'll go a lot faster through the story. But at the very beginning, it was a much slower read. And those ones often take me a lot longer to read. And for the amount of chapters this book has, a lot slower a lot slower read means it's going to take quite a while. Because often people read one chapter at a time. And if they're reading one chapter per day, this four three chapter book goes only four hundred something pages. You're not making very much progress every day. When in the average book you'd be done in half the time, because the average book is only half the amount of pages. Um, furthermore, let's start getting into the plot and characters. Um, there were some new characters introduced that weren't in past stories that I know weren't in past stories there may have been some other new ones I can't tell but some kind of important new ones are the introductions of Tarfang in J. June. Tarfang is an Ewok who apparently has is wanted on tin systems and then J. June is Soliston who Owns the XR808G, I believe it is, which is a similar type of ship to the Millennium Falcon, which has ended up being lost later on in the book. The bad guys in this story is known as the Dark Nest, which is a group of Killix. Um, the Killix leader, the good Killix leader, not the bad one, because... It's kind of separate, kind of not, but the good guys are mm, Thol, or Raynar Thol, from past stories, and kind of became the leader of a bunch of bugs, because if a human or alien stays around, they kill it too long, they come joiners, and they're like, brought into the collective mind. Anyways, there's a dark nest. Inside this group of nests that kind of is forcing its unconscious will on the normal nest. And um, their leaders are Welk and Lomi Plo. Uh, Welk is ended up killed later in the book. Whereas Lomi Plo, I believe, is still alive. I'm not exactly sure, but you can obviously tell... She is still alive. That's going to come to play in later books because Darkness isn't going to go away if one of their leaders is still alive. I also believe um, another character, Alema, she ends up turning to the dark side when she's brought into the nest. She's brought in as a dark joiner, unlike her counterparts of Jaina Solo and Zack and several others. And so she kind of turns to the dark side due to that because. She had more dark intentions, and um, I believe she is also killed at the end of the book on the attack on the Dark Nest. The um, major issue that causes the uh, story in this book is a border conflict between the Killix and the Chiss, as the Killix are getting closer and closer to Chiss borders, and the Chiss are kind of getting freaked out by this and they're kind of aggressive-ish towards this so it's a little bit against their doctrine so they can't exactly attack without being attacked 
Um, anyways, that that's a major conflict and why everything is caused here. Uh, the Killix did not really become an issue though till Raynar joined the nest because before that um they were just slowly expanding they weren't doing much but then Raynar becomes the Unu Thol of the nest their leader and he shares his knowledge of technology and whatnot with them they start expanding further causing the conflict with the Chiss and um yeah, for other major characters in the book, there's Jaina Solo, there's Han Solo, Leia, Luke, Mara Jade, Ben Skywalker, uh, all the loved, fully loved characters in the Star Wars universe, and there's some interesting political stuff going on that I believe is going to have more to play in the later books, and um, anyways, my review of this book would be it's an okay Star Wars book. Don't put it at the top of your list. I'd more put it like, if you have the book and you just want to read some Star Wars and you haven't read it yet, go ahead and read it. It's not the best out there. You could make a better choice. But I believe this book was still well done enough. That is a good read. Some people may enjoy it better than I do. It just wasn't exactly my style, but I am still going to read the rest of the trilogy as I have, as I plan to read many of the Star Wars books that there are. I don't like just reading the first book in a trilogy and going and finishing there. So anyways, this is Indiana signing out. I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.